Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out to be with us this morning. I'm certainly honored to have Marty with me today as we uh, make this trip and start our statewide tour. As you all know, on the campaign trail, I made a lot of promises to the voters of our great state. We talked about making Georgia number one for small business. We vowed to reform state government, invest in education, and keep our taxes low. On the campaign trail, I talked about strengthening our rural communities and standing with our Georgia farmers. Over and over again, I promised to put hardworking Georgians first. Well, today marks the 100th day since I became Georgia's 83rd governor. I'm proud to report that we have been delivering on those promises. We are growing jobs. We are investing in education, expanding opportunity, and keeping our families safe and putting people ahead of politics. Our budget priorities for 2019, our budget priorities for 2019 and 2020 reflect our values as a state and our promises for Georgia's future. We fully funded public education and gave Georgia teachers and counselors a pay raise. We invested almost $70 million, that's $30,000 per school for security upgrades to keep our classrooms safe. In the budget, we doubled funding for mental health services in Georgia high schools. We've created a task force within the Georgia Bureau of Investigation to undermine drug cartels, gangs, and human trafficking. And we've also provided millions of dollars in relief for our farmers that have been impacted by Hurricane Michael. We have budgeted conservatively and we have kept our taxes low. Also, during this legislative session, I was proud to partner with state lawmakers, both Republicans and Democrats, to tackle Georgia's most pressing challenges. I signed the Patients First Act to craft a Georgia-centric health care system that will help lower insurance premiums expand access to care, and improve health outcomes for our families. We passed the LIFE Act to protect the innocent unborn and ensure that all Georgians are given an opportunity to live, grow, and prosper in our state. We tackled CON reform to ensure that hardworking Georgians have access to life-saving cancer treatment. Through executive action, we've launched the Georgians First Commission to identify anti-business regulations, fees, and taxes. My wife, Marty, as you all know, has formed the Grace Commission to eliminate sex trafficking and provide care to victims of this evil industry. During the session, we've also expanded access to THC oil so children suffering from chronic diseases, diseases can access the treatment that they so desperately need. And folks, we've moved the needle on strengthening rural Georgia by passing measures to bring high-speed internet to all parts of our state. We accomplished a lot in this first 100 days of my term, but I want people to know that we are just getting started. Our economy is outperforming the nation, but we have to keep working to make sure it stays that way. Historic job announcements are being made, but we cannot take our foot off the gas. Now, more than ever, we need to reaffirm our commitment to Georgia's future. We need to champion policies that ensure a bright future for all Georgians, no matter what their zip code. We need to stand with our farmers as they continue to struggle to recover from Hurricane Michael. We must continue to protect the innocent and the most vulnerable among us. Now is the time to double down on our efforts and put hard work in Georgians first. We will continue to work hard every day to make sure that the next 100 days were better than the first. I want to thank these hard working Georgians from all over the state for their strong support along the way. Our success was made possible by those who worked so hard for us. We have to keep chopping to make sure that we secure a safer and stronger Georgia. Thank you very much.
It's a loud place out here. Say that one more time, Gray. I couldn't hear the second half of that question, but I think for me what that means is I, I want people to know that we're not just going to rest on the laurels of a great and historic legislative session where we quite honestly I think accomplished a lot more than uh, many people thought we would do. It means that we have to continue to work just as hard the next 100 days as we have the first 100 days. Uh, it's just going to be a little bit different focus for us now that we're you know, finished with the legislative session. We're going to focus on reforming state government. We're going to start preparing for what we're going to do in the session next year. You know, We're going to continue to focus just like I was for a good part of the day yesterday on economic development in our state, growing more jobs, creating more opportunities, creating the workforce that will help bring companies to Georgia, have companies that are here continue to grow, and really finish the things that I promised people I would do. We're starting to work on adoption reform, the care system. The Georgians First Commission meeting is, is uh, group is, has been meeting. The Grace Commission that Marty put together uh, is going to work, a great group of people. You know, the gang task force and the GBI I talked to Director Reynolds last night. He tells me just about every time I talk to him, which is normally every every two or three days, that you wouldn't believe how many people are reaching out to us asking for our input and help on the gang crisis, and, and it's in all parts of our state. So I'm very excited about the opportunity that we have before us to go after street gangs and drug cartels. Well, I think that's you know part of what we'll be reviewing is what the next steps are for rural broadband to make sure that we are going to all parts of our state. I think we definitely moved the needle this year. Uh, there had been a log jam on the legislation. I'm very proud of the legislature and our team for coming together. And uh, quite honestly, a lot of the parties that had been adversaries in the past working together to solve a lot of those issues, including the municipal association and, and the county Commissioners Association. So I feel very confident uh, going forward that we'll continue to work on that. But I, you know, I was texting again last night with Senator Perdue. I'm going to see the president later today. Uh, my main focus for rural Georgia right now is making sure our farmers get some help. I spoke to, you know, Governor DeSantis yesterday about that. And I know there's a lot of the governors in the southeast that want to see the disaster relief package passed and we continue to work on that daily. I will be, be here, Marty and I will, to greet the President and the First Lady. It's going to be great to have them back in Georgia. I think he is concerned, uh, like I am, about the opioid epidemic and uh, a lot of the other things that are driving that, street gangs and drug cartels being part of it, and I'm glad to have him come back to Georgia. I think that's an amazing event they have going on today, and I think it shows that that's a priority of his for him to take the time to come down for it. Hers too, Marty said. Marty said hers too, which is true. She has a, uh, the first lady, Melania Trump, has an aggressive agenda as well on the opioid epidemic. Well, I think uh, certainly we learned a lot, uh, made, you know, a few mistakes that we learned from, nothing, nothing big, just kind of how we operate with the legislature and the, the different, um, you know, leadership factions that there are in the Capitol. But I think they would probably say the, the same thing. But overall, I think it was a tremendous session. Uh, the thing that probably was a little different being governor versus uh, being a legislature or serving as Secretary of State is just how involved we were on the last day. Uh, we were, as you all know, very busy putting together the, uh, the, the medical cannabis bill and dealing with a lot of other issues at the end of the session. So it was kind of a crazy day. 
Uh, but we, we got a lot of good things done. Some things weren't, but that's how it always is, and we'll continue to work on those issues for next year. Well, I, th I think my message would be very similar to the message I had, you know, after I won the won the election in November during the transition period. I told people I was going to do exactly like I did when I first got elected to the state state senate in a razor thin race. I was going to go to work for that whole district down there, and that's exactly uh, what I did with uh, Marty standing by my side. And I told people as governor, I was going to do the same thing. And I was going to be a governor for all the people, not just those that voted for me. And I think when you look at our agenda, that's what we've done. I mean, we put Georgians first. We've done the things that I campaigned on, so people should not be surprised at our agenda. But a lot of those issues, like I said during the campaign, are things that a vast majority of Georgians believe in. A teacher's pay raise, keeping our kids safe when they're at school. You know, doing something about health care, not just talking about doing it, but actually accomplishing something. I couldn't be more prouder of the legislature this year for the stance that they took on the Patients First Act. And that included bipartisan support in the House of Representatives. So I was very appreciative of that. I understand the politics behind health care, but there's some people in the General Assembly that put that behind and voted for that bill. And uh, we are working hard literally every single day to work on lowering insurance premiums and providing better access for hardworking Georgians and also going after uh, gangs and drug cartels. I mean, all parts of our state are affected by this. Republicans are affected by it. Democrats are affected by it. And people that don't even care about politics or don't even vote are affected by it. But it is an epidemic in our state, and we are absolutely going to do something about it.